Hey guys, it's Hannah and welcome back to the Dyslexic Reader and welcome back to another episode of Novelty Chats, the Sunday YouTube videos where we just have rambling bookish discussions between each other. Our mug of the week this week is this cute Winnie the Pooh honey pot. My brother brought me this back when he was visiting me last week from England, so Jonah if you're out there, love you and stay safe, honey. So feel free to pause this and go and get yourself a cup of tea or coffee or juice or water or whatever it is that pleases you and get ready for a discussion. Before we get into our discussion, I wanted to give you an updated reading stat house. Um, Helter Skelter, this is a read along that Peter Mon over at Peter Likes Books is doing and I've had this book on my shelf for a while and I've been saving it for like this month, this time of year anyway. Um, I'm almost half way through and I am really enjoying this. I don't find true crime overly scary because I feel like it's happened, they've caught the killer and I'm sort of focused on like the facts and how the trial's going to play out and stuff whereas I feel in fiction you're in the moment, you don't know who's going to make it and who's not and you're not so caught up in the fact and to me that's scarier. Um, But it is still really interesting. I've sort of passed the like murders and I'm into like the trial and I thought that would be the most boring bit but I'm actually enjoying it more than I did learning about the murders. I am also listening to, why is that so colourful? Ooh, The Boy That Never Was by Karen Perry. I'm listening to this on audiobook. I've got it on loan from the library. I'm obsessed with how that looks on camera. Weird, huh? That's never happened before. But this is a sort of mystery thriller about a boy who when he was three they think that he died in an earthquake. This is all first chapter, no spoilers. Um, but no body was ever found and then five and a half years later his parents um, are in Dublin, that's where they live now, and the father's in a crowd and he thinks he sees the little boy with just a random woman has him by the hand and he calls his name and he sort of looks at him and he's like convinced it's his son. But there's other things going along and it swaps between the narrative of the husband and wife. It alternates chapters so one's from Harry's point of view and one's from Robin's point of view and it goes back and forth which is interesting. Also the husband as a narrator, narr the narrator, a narrator, the husband we're starting to learn maybe isn't trustworthy or 100% mentally sound so like do we take his chapters as fact or not it's very interesting it's well done I am finding it a little bit slow at the minute but I'm only on chapter five so I'm hoping that will pick up now the discussion um you'll know by now because you've clicked on this video and I'm assuming have read the title that I'm going to talk about TBRs or to be reads or want to reads or whatever people deem them as personally I do not do TBRs I cannot plan my reading and I'm going to talk about why it doesn't work for me and why it might work for some other people and you can let me know in the comments do you use TBRs how do you use them because there's a million different ways to do it some people plan out months in advance some people just have their next book in line some people have a general list that they'll pick from but it's not in an order so I would be really interested to hear what you do and how you work your TBR because it's something that I don't use them at all so to me is really interesting to hear how other people do it when I can't seem to find a system that works for me yet but that might change. I am a complete mood reader. That is one of the reasons why I cannot plan my reading out. I could be reading a 600 page classic and the next thing I might want is a children's picture book and I might be halfway through a historical fiction and the next thing I might want is a gothic thriller. Uh, I think that's partly because my reading is so diverse, not only in genre, but also in the ages that I read. I do read like right down to kids books, through to adult books, whereas most people would read just adult, just YA, just kids, whatever. So I think that has a bit to do with it as well, as well as all the different genres. So if you read mostly thrillers, then you're gonna know that you're probably gonna want to read another thriller next. Whereas for me, because I read so all over the place, I can't really 
know what I'm going to be in the mood for a week down the line, let alone a couple of months down the line. Part of this I feel like is because I use my library so avidly. I'm going to the library this afternoon and I'm so excited. But in the library I never go in with a specific book or a specific type of book in mind. I go in just looking for a surprise that next great book that I wasn't expecting to find. So when I go to the library, I might see any number of books, again, in the children's or adult section, and just want to read it right now. Like, I just want to, when I find these books that seem so interesting, I just want to read them there and then. So I'm not quite sure how you could possibly factor library books into TBRs. I can understand organising your books on your shelf. Okay, I want to read this before I want to read that. I can kind of get that. But when someone like me who uses a library an awful lot, I don't really know 100% what books are at my disposal. So therefore, you can't really plan ahead. Also, I feel like TBRs can sort of make reading a chore. And that was one of the main reasons that I put off making this booktube channel for so long. I was watching booktube for a good year before I started this and I didn't want to make reading a chore. To me reading is a hobby and sometimes I find it when I put very stringent goals in place for my hobbies then the enjoyment is completely sucked. I think even if I was to look at a book and think, okay, I have to read 100 pages of this a day and I have to be finished by Tuesday afternoon. I can't even think like that about a book or the pressure completely turns me off. And um, I understand some people on booktube do make money from it, is part of their job. And I understand that a lot of booktubers are also reviewers and get paid and sponsored for doing that. But to me, that pressure of having to read a set book in a set time to talk about it in a set way to a certain set of people, that to me becomes a chore, it becomes a job and enjoyment can very quickly be leached from reading and that is something that I never want to do. I do understand why people do make TBRs. Um, I understand why anyone would need structure in whether it be hobbies or daily life or in work and I kind of get that. I'm quite a structured person myself. I do like routine but as I said I feel like when it comes to maybe more hobbies that structure if it's overdone can really constrict it and sort of turn me off. So I don't know maybe I just haven't found the method of making TBRs that suits me so again that's why I want to hear from you and how you make your TBRs because I could be a changed woman after the comments of these videos who knows Um, it's possible that you can tell me how you plan your TBR out and I might even give it a try and uh, I might do a November TBR based on one of your suggestions and see how it goes I think that would be quite interesting hmm that could be um, a video in the works. I could do a TBR and then at the end of the month in my wrap up talk about like whether I was able to stick to it or not. Interesting. I'll have to make a note of that after I finish video in this. So that's it for today. I hope that gave you something to think about and please do comment down below. I hope you're all happy. I hope you're all healthy and I hopefully will see you all in my next video. Goodbye.